Bickley and Murata. Bickley and Murata mornings. Arizona Sports, the local sports leader. Bickley Blast. In the world of professional sports, there are no problems that elite talent cannot solve, like 25 points from Devin Booker in the first quarter at New Orleans, or 40 points from Kevin Durant without the benefit of a single free throw Sunday night at Footprint Center. And in the wake, there's only one question. Which one wins Western Conference Player of the Week? Either way, the last two games have been a reassuring display from a Suns team that has been all all over the map for the first 40 games of the season. A team that carried a hard-earned reputation as the worst fourth quarter crew in the NBA. Now, late last week, I said that time is of essence for the Suns. Not in the win column necessarily, but it's a pivotal time if the Suns want to build a special connection with their somewhat muted fan base. A fan base that had grown skeptical of their new super team and its lack of availability in the first half of the season. Now, they are still a long ways away from being dominant, but things are certainly looking better now, and that is because the big three have been available, accountable, and looking like the constellation of stars we were all promised, the one that didn't require a telescope. All right, today's Bickley Blast brought to you by my great friends at Chapman BMW who make luxury attainable. Find them online at chapmanbmw.com. Or like Grayson Allen shooting 50, 40, 90. <laughs> or, or Nurk making every play and setting the screens for us. Yeah, I mean, we, you know, we, we trust the guys in here. And, you know, everybody's understanding their role. Uh, I think people are understanding where their, their shots are going to come and when to be aggressive and, you know, understanding setting good screens for a guy like this or Brad is going to open up, you know, everything, honestly. So, um you know, we have the talent. We trust all the guys in here. And that's Devin Booker after last night's win over the Indiana Pacers talking about knowing the Suns need more than the big three and the trust that they have mm-hmm. in the others. And, yeah, I would say there's trust in Grayson Allen as well as there should be. Mm-hmm. There's a level of trust in Yusuf Nurkic, who it was a strange night for, for Nurkic last night. Mm-hmm. He played 18 minutes, uh, got into foul trouble, had four, fouled out, had four offensive fouls. Mm-hmm but was on pace for like 25 rebounds if he played a normal amount of minutes. Um, and I think there's trust there, and I think there's a level of trust in, in Eric Gordon. Yeah, that's, that's, I think so. That's six guys. And that's it. I, I think that's probably where the list ends. Yeah. yeah. And I think there's there's defensive trust still in Josh Okogie. And Josh hit a three-pointer mm-hmm. the other night in the win over over New Orleans. It was good to see. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's not looking for his shot a lot, and that that three-point percentage, and uh, you know, he's going to get more open looks than most when he's out on the floor, mm-hmm. d- regardless of who he's out there with. But he's it's down to like twenty-three yeah. percent. But the trust needs to be built. You know, about nine deep, I think, for yeah. the Suns to feel comfortable. Even if the big three are playing like this, though, yeah, yes. is six enough when the big three are this great? Well, yeah, but but again, uh, what I think Vinny is talking about is re- uh, reliable rotational pieces. They don't have to be stars, but they have to be guys that you can count on to bring something tangible every night. Yeah, I mean... And and you got to have that, because even, even the... Look at the Denver Nuggets. It's the most recent example. Exactly where I was going. Yeah. Nikola Jokic was playing at a historic playoff level. Jamal Murray was amazing. Mm-hmm. Aaron Gordon and Michael Porter Jr. were great. Contavious Caldwell Pope was great. And they only had to rely on three players off the bench, and it was the same three every yeah. single every night single because one. Michael Malone knew what he was going to get. That's how you win championships. Yes, uh, agreed. And to Jarrett's point, you asked the question kind of with an incredulous tone to it, Jarrett. Yeah, even with the big three being this good, and they were amazing last night, but that was a, a nip and tuck game with two minutes to go against mm-hmm. a team that didn't have its best player in Tyrese Halliburton. Yeah. Yes, and and so so that that fourth quarter thing kind of cropped its head, but but at least um, at least the way they responded um, after Buddy Heald made that three, and you're like, oh great, they're losing the game again. And, and they came out of a timeout, and Kevin Durant hit that three, and then Bradley Beal made a series of plays. So at least they reacted well down the stretch. So that that might be a little of the difference. And you're right, the, without the Tyrese Halliburton last night to me became uh, the the quality of victory went down a notch maybe two but but at this point in time it's really about the suns getting something together mm-hmm. 
And, and I think that they're starting to do that. Yeah, I, I think, you know, there was so much patience and waiting. Hey, wait till they get the big three. How can you judge the Suns? We haven't seen Durant, Booker, and Beal on the floor for yeah. any stretch. I mean, before Bradley Beal came back after his latest injury, they had played 24 minutes on the floor together. Right. It is hard to judge. Now we've got a sample. Sample looks pretty good, especially in the win-loss column. Yeah. Uh, and I will say this. I agree with you. When the Halliburton news broke yesterday, it's like it goes from a game that you figure this is going to be a tough one. Mm -hmm. Still, you can win this game. It went to a must win. Must win. They won that game, and that was on the heels of, in my opinion, their best game of the season. I agree. Friday night New Orleans, that that was by far the high water mark to me. That is the way I think most Suns fans expected business to be handled on a regular basis by this team with the big three. Yes. And, and they handled it from the outset. New Orleans was never in that game. Never. Never. And that, that's that's what I like most about this game is they, they went into that building and just unplugged that team. There was there was no fight in that team. Pelicans were doubting they could. They had no belief in anything they were doing. They were missing shots and and Devin Booker and, and for Devin Booker and it wasn't just the twenty five point first quarter. He had two quarters of twenty or more points, yeah, which that, is really hard to do in the NBA. Yeah, that doesn't happen. That a lot. doesn't happen. Gen- generally, you get in the zone and you can roll it through a quarter like that. You're not duplicating that. You're not doubling that up. But it was. I thought that game at least was a reminder that this guy's a killer. And and this guy will light you up, and and I think I think that reminder it just set the tone for everything, and I think it completely emasculated the Pelicans, and so I was I was stoked about that. I was stoked of hoping to see a showdown last night. It didn't happen. Doesn't matter. They're now they're we're what six games over five hundred twenty four and eighteen twenty four and eighteen. So yeah, I mean they're trending in the right way, which is good. Yeah, and last night, uh, out of matchup necessity, out of foul trouble necessity, at the end of the first half and at the end of the game, we saw more of what they're calling the laser lineup, which is, I, I don't know if the name's great, but, hey, it's it's unique. And that's the small ball lineup that we saw. Mm-hmm. That was a big part of the comeback win against Sacramento. Devin Booker still talking about how much he loves it. Yeah, I love it. Um, you know, like you said, it opens the driving lanes and – Usually it takes away the rim protection because, you know, if they help, they understand that they have a shooter on the backside. And, you know, we've been a, doing a good job of one more in it um, and just playing for the next man, the good to great pass. And, you know, we're just getting a lot of open looks. Yeah, getting a lot of open looks. And last night was interesting because, um, you know, Indiana, their center, Miles Turner, is one of their better players and could be real anchored defensively, one of the better shot blockers in the league. He played 18 minutes. And for the most part, got played mm-hmm. off the floor. He was yeah. minus 25 yeah. in those 18 minutes. So uh, the Suns did take advantage, not necessarily as much as they did in the Sacramento game. Yeah. but they saw, And it didn't even work out that great at the end of the first half, but when the game was on the line and they went small in those final three minutes, you saw what happened. Yeah, I'm, I'm a big fan of it. I think I there's – I think there – yeah, I, I've made that pretty obvious. I just I, – I've seen it work wonders for basketball teams. But, hey, listen, if if, if they can find a way to do it um, in, in bits and pieces here and there and still win, okay, that works. Thanks for watching Bickley and Murata. Click to see the latest Bickley Blast and hit the button in the middle to subscribe to Arizona Sports.